These are Maxwell's equations. Faraday's law, which relates electric and magnetic fields. Ampere's law, which also relates electric and magnetic fields, but with an added term to account for the possible presence of a current. Gauss's law, which relates an electric field to a static electric charge. And the solenoidal law, which relates a magnetic field to static magnetic charge, which, since there are no magnetic monopoles, will always be zero. As we've seen in other modules, a static charge produces a static, and therefore non-propagating, electric field, by Gauss's law. A moving charge, or current, produces a curling magnetic field, by Ampere's law. So if you suppose that we have an infinite line current in the vertical direction, like this, which is constant with respect to time, Ampere's law says that this line current will be encircled by a magnetic field. The magnitude of this magnetic field will be directly related to J, the source current. So since J is constant with respect to time, the magnetic field will also be constant with respect to time. Now, if you look at Faraday's law, it says that for a magnetic field to produce an electric field, it must have a non-zero time derivative. So our time constant magnetic field will not produce an electric field. So for this case of an infinite line current that is constant with respect to time, this is the total field solution, a static magnetic field directed in circles around the current. What if we have a current that is varying with time? Let's consider two cases here. First, a linear variation. This is a current that is either linearly increasing with time or linearly decreasing with time. Again, by Ampere's law, the presence of a current leads to a directly related curling magnetic field. So here, our linearly varying current creates a linearly varying magnetic field, which loops around the current. Now, by Faraday's law, this linearly varying magnetic field has a non-zero time derivative. So from the current sourced magnetic field, we will get an electric field. This electric field will be perpendicular to the magnetic field, so it's pointing in the same direction as the initial current. Note, though, that because the magnetic field in this case is linearly varying, and the electric field is related to the derivative of the magnetic field, the electric field produced here is constant with respect to time. By Ampere's law, in order for this electric field to produce a magnetic field of its own, it must have a non-zero time derivative. Since, in this case, the electric field is constant, it produces no magnetic field. So this is the total field solution for this case, a linearly varying magnetic field plus a static electric field. So you see the pattern here. If you have a static charge, where the velocity of the charge is zero, the result is only a static electric field. If you have a constant current, where the derivative of the velocity of the charge is zero, it results in static magnetic field. If you have a linearly varying current, where the second derivative of the velocity of the charge is zero, you get a magnetic field plus a static electric field. Similarly, if you had a current where the second derivative of the velocity was non-zero, but the third derivative, or the jerk, of the charge was zero, you'd get a magnetic field plus a linear electric field plus a constant magnetic field. So unless you can take an infinite number of derivatives without getting a zero, this process always eventually dies out. However, some functions are infinitely differentiable. Consider an infinite line of sinusoidally varying current. Here, by Ampere's law, you will get a sinusoidally varying magnetic field, which circles the current. This sinusoidally varying magnetic field will give rise to an electric field that's related to its derivative. Since the derivative of a sinusoid is another sinusoid, the electric field here will also be sinusoidal. By Ampere's law again, a sinusoidal electric field will give rise to a sinusoidal magnetic field, which will give rise to a sinusoidal electric field, which will give rise to a sinusoidal magnetic field, and so on. 
So since you can take the derivative of a sinusoid an infinite number of times and still keep a sinusoid, this process never ends. So conceptually speaking, a sinusoidal current will give rise to a magnetic field, which by its time derivative leads to an electric field, which by its time derivative gives rise to a magnetic field, and so on. This is the self-propagating electromagnetic wave. It travels forward through oscillation of its mutually dependent electric and magnetic fields and no longer needs any input from the current source. It is self-sustaining. So once this wave is created, bringing it into contact with the conductor can result in either reflection, as we've discussed in another module, or the creation of surface currents. Obviously, an antenna engineer who is trying to receive this signal will need to design their receiver to minimize reflection and maximize the received currents, which is a product of the geometry, orientation, and composition of the receiver. So a communication system consists of a transmit antenna, where created currents are used to generate a propagating electromagnetic wave, and a receive antenna, where the energy of the electromagnetic wave is converted back into currents.